Good morning. Tau overflows. O show on the death of Krishna Murti. I do not feel sorry for his death. His death is beautiful. He has attained all that life is capable to give. But I certainly feel sorry for the whole world. It goes on missing the greatest flight of consciousness, its highest peaks, its brightest stars. It is world is too much concerned with trivia. Osho says one of my friends was present there. Krishnamurti lamented. He lamented throughout his whole life. He lamented that people have taken me for an entertainment. They come to listen to me. There are people who have listened to him for more than 50 years continually and still they are the same people as had come for the first time to listen to him because this is the situation of most of the people. Naturally, it is annoying and irritating that the same people, most of them I know because J. Krishnamurti used to come once, only once in a year for two or three weeks to Bombay and slowly and slowly all the followers in Bombay became acquainted with me. They all were sad about this point. What should be done? How can we make Krishnamurti happy? Because he always lamented and people have taken him for entertainment. The reason was that Krishnamurti only talked. He never gave any device in which or through which whatever he was talking about became an experience. Talk is one thing, but if your talk cannot give the person the experience of what is being spoken, it is of no use. It was totally his fault. Whatever he was saying was absolutely right, but he was not creating the right climate, the right milieu in which it could become a seed. The word has to become a seed in you and goes deep within you and from there the process of the germination and the transformation begins. Of course, he was very much disappointed with humanity and that there were not a single person who had become enlightened through his teachings. His teachings have all the seeds, but he never prepared the ground. The ground is very necessary. My words, the words of an awakened one act as a seed, but the ground he has to prepare in an individual. Zen does not deny entertainment the way Krishnamurti condemned it in the last testament to the world. He said religion is not entertainment. That is true, but entertainment can be a vast enough to include all the different aspects of enlightenment in it. Enlightenment can be and is multidimensional. It can include laughter, it can include love, it can include beauty, it can include all sort of creativity. There is nothing to keep it from the world and from transforming the world into a more poetic place, more beautiful garden. Everything can be brought to a better a state of grace. Enlightenment is multidimensional. It includes laughter, it includes beauty, it includes creativity, it needs, it includes poetry. Osho says it was February 8, 18th of February 1886. I was traveling in a, in Germany using the travel link. It's a German word which I will try to pronounce, but soon I am going to get the correct pronunciation. Mitfar Central, meaning right sharing central. The driver of the car switched on the car radio and we started listening to the news that was coming in English. 
the last news item happened to be on J. Krishnamurti. The news broadcaster announced Jiddu Krishnamurti, the religious philosopher and teacher, died of cancer yesterday at his residence at California Foundation in Ozai, California. He was 90 years old. The German driver who did not know who Krishnamurti was asked me, Do you know who this person was? I said, Yes. And I told him Krishnamurti was an enlightened mystic, an awakened one, just like Gautam Buddha, who did not look like a traditional saint, he was a modern Buddha. And it is interesting that 25 centuries ago, there were Buddha and Mahabir as contemporaries. They respected one another. To continue the conversation, the German driver asked me, do you know anything about Bhagwan Shri Ratnish? That time, Osho was known as Bhagwan Shri Ratnish. I told the driver, yes, I know Bhagwan Shri Ratnish. He is modern Buddha and an Everest of consciousness. Our century is really fortunate and blessed to have Buddhas as contemporaries. Krishnamurti, Osho, Raman, Meher Baba and so many others. They were contemporaries. Just like 25 centuries ago, there were Gautam Buddha and Mahabir who were raising the consciousness of humanity by their mere presence. He became more and more curious and asked me more questions about the teachings of Krishnamurti and Osho. Our conversation on this topic continued for the duration of our whole journey. After this journey, I tried to look for the news and articles about Krishnamurti's death in English newspapers from Britain, USA and India and could not find any relevant news. I wondered that an enlightened person of Krishnamurti's greatness dies and the world media is not even bothered to report about it. There is so much insensitivity that prevails in the mainstream media. The following week, Osho was, Osho in an answer to the question, expresses the same feeling in one of his discourses. He says, I was more shocked by the news than by the death. A man like Krishnamurti dies and newspapers did not have a space to devote to that man who for 90 years continually has been helping humanity to be more intelligent, to be more mature. Nobody has worked so hard and for so long as Krishnamurti did. Just a small news article, unnoticeable, and if a politician sneezes, it makes headlines. The death of an enlightened one, enlightened one like Krishnamurti is nothing to be sad about, something to be celebrated with songs and dances. It is a moment of rejoicing. The death of an awakened one is not really a death. He knows his immortality. His death is only the death of the body. But J. Krishnamurti will go on living as part of universal consciousness forever and ever. It is a real mystery. I have loved him since I have known him and he had been loving towards me as well, but we have never met. Hence, the relationship, the connection is something 
something beyond worlds we have not seen each other but yet perhaps we have been two persons closest to each other in the whole world the enlightened one there is nothing that he has to tell the other enlightened one the two have been drinking from the same source at the most when they are together they are looking at one another they can rejoice rejoice each other's company but there is nothing that one enlightened master can tell the other enlightened master they can remain in each other's company rejoicing the presence the moment we have not seen each other but yet perhaps we have been two persons closest to each other in the whole universe we had a tremendous communion that needs no language awakened one communes without words silent is their communion when a disciple a seeker a devotee reaches to that state there are no questions in his mind and the communion is simply wordless there is no words and that needs need not be a physical presence you are asking me about my connection with him it was the deepest possible connection when i came to trinidad in 1980 after that there was no physical connection between me and my uncle sufi onkarna there was no need of any connection because the con- communion was wordless the connection between osho and krishna murti was the deepest possible connection which needs no physical contact which needs no linguistic communion not only that once in a while i used to criticize him and he used to criticize me and we enjoyed each other's criticism knowing perfectly well that the other does not mean it now that he is no more i will miss him because i will not be able to criticize him i it won't be right it was such a joy to criticize him he was the most intelligent man of this century but he was not understood by the people he has died and it seems the world goes on the way without looking back for a single moment that the most intelligent man is no longer there it it will be difficult to find the sharpness and that intelligence again in centuries but people are sleep walkers they have not taken much note the in newspapers just a small corner where nobody reads the death of krishna murthy was declared and it seems that a 90 year old man who has been continuously speaking for almost 70 years moving around the world trying to help people to get unconditioned trying to help people to become free nobody seems even to pay tribute to the man who has worked the hardest in the whole history for the man's freedom and dignity you should not feel nobody should feel sorry for his death his death is beautiful and uh, he has attained the po- that life can give him it goes on missing the greatest flights of consciousness its highest peaks its brightest stars it is world is too much concerned with trivia enough for now